My name is Ann Tilly. I'm a textile artist and clothing designer. And on any given day of the week, you're gonna find me doing some kind of textile project. And this week I have an especially rad lineup of projects I'm gonna be doing. And so I thought it'd be really fun to bring you along on my week and show you what kind of sewing and textile related crafts I'm going to be doing. So let's jump right in. Today is Monday and what I thought I would work on today is something I've been wanting to do for a long time, which is to make a recreation of one of my favorite vintage shirts. This is some sort of men's pajama shirt from Sears, but there's little things about this shirt that I've always wished were different. For example, the button placement has always been a little off for me. And for some reason, I just have massive Hulk biceps that are a little tight for these sleeves. So with recreating the shirt, I can make those improvements. Another inspiration for this shirt is that I was gifted a ton of this white silk charmeuse fabric that has a little bit of stretch in it. See that? And I thought this shirt would be beautiful in silk, but I don't want a white shirt. So I'm going to do a little bit of a DIY dye setup in my yard today and dye this black. I'm not necessarily trying to have this be a tutorial video or a how to, but if you see anything that I'm doing that you're interested in learning more about, just let me know in the comments below and I can work on creating content to teach you more about what I'm doing. Okay, let's dive in. I start by measuring out the amount of fabric I plan on dyeing and then throw it into a wash with the textile detergent called Synthropol. While I'm still at this scale, I'll also weigh out the amount of dye powder I need. Today I'm using a jet black acid dye formulated specifically for silks. The amount of dye powder you need is based on how much fabric you're dyeing and the depth of color you want. Or in my case today, I am just using all that I have left. In a perfect world, I would have a dedicated burner outside to use for dyeing that could help me maintain a consistent temperature for my bath. But alas, I don't have that. So I'm gonna start with boiling water and it'll just cool down as I work. Once outside, I mixed some of the boiling water with my dye powder and added it to the vat. Since I was at the end of my container of powder, I thought it would be really smart to pour water into that and shake it up to get every little bit of dye powder left. But science is real and I just blew hot dye all over myself. <laughs> Once the dye powder seems good and dissolved, I go ahead and add my fabric. And just pretend like you don't see those little plastic containers. I had tried a resist technique and it just didn't work, so I pulled them out. I try to mix vigorously and consistently to help me get as even a dye bath as possible. After a little while, I add a tablespoon of citric acid, which creates a chemical bond between the dye and fabric. I attempt to maintain the rigorous stirring for 30 minutes before I take it out of the dye bath and give it several rinses. My final rinse will be in the washing machine with another round of Synthropol detergent. Here's the funny thing about using threadbare fabric to make a shirt. You end up with a threadbare shirt. You may have seen the video where I used an old bed sheet to make this button down for Adam. And every time he wears it, it tears. And so far I've patched it back every time in my stubborn refusal to let it go. Sometimes we learn these realities the hard way. I've decided to call it a design experiment. The world is so full of a number of things. I'm sure we should all be as happy as. But are we? No. Definitely no. Positively no. Decidedly no. Uh uh. Short people have long faces. And long people have short faces. 
Good morning. Today is Tuesday. Adam's downstairs cooking breakfast for me. So Grace has volunteered to invite us over for a dye day at her studio. She's a fellow textile mentor with me at the Forge Greensboro. And so we're going to do indigo natural dye today and also a pokeberry natural dye, which I didn't know that you could do a dye with pokeberry and I didn't know what pokeberry was and she suggested that I probably have some of my property and when she showed me a picture I recognized it. I'm gonna walk around this morning and see what I can find and harvest. She said the more the better. So it's raining a little bit right now so maybe it'll let up and then I can go then and I'm gonna have a sweet breakfast downstairs. I'm also going to check on how my black dye did from yesterday on the silk shirt mousse. Let's go check it out. Mm. So here was the first little bit that I noticed right here behind my studio. Okay, that might be all for this area, so let's go down the hill. We're hunters. <laughs> I've got my camo on, right? Yeah. <laughs> Pokeberry hunters. <laughs> it's still got. Wow. <laughs> you hear its hollowness. Oh my god, look at this space. <laughs> I love it. The pokeberries I brought got added to a hot water bath she had started with the ones she'd been collecting that week. And the materials I brought to be dyed got added to a vinegar pre-mordant she had warmed up in a turkey roasting pot of all things. We let all that soak while we waited for Jennifer, another textile mentor at the forge, to join us. And in the meantime, I got to enjoy all the cool things in her studio. The recipe says to take the berries and mash up the berries, mm -hmm. but I have had better luck leaving the berries intact on the pods mm -hmm. because this pink from the stem can influence the color. And if you let them ferment, you will get the most gorgeous orangey pink you have ever seen. And it's deep. It's a really, really deep color. Nice. There's another lady who does that one. When she's done with the dye pot, instead of throwing it away, she will make ink out of it. Nice. I love that idea. We just want to kind of keep this immersed. Mm -hmm. Nice. Are we going to be agitating it much? No, don't okay. need to agitate, but we need to maintain heat. So now that the pokeberry is soaking, we can turn our attention to the different indigo resists we're going to play with. Grace is clamping folded fabric between wooden blocks, and Jennifer is wrapping screws with twine. I decided to try a traditional Japanese pole wrapping technique with a PVC pipe and some twine. 
Once the fabric's completely wrapped in the twine, I scrunch the fabric to the bottom before I dip it in the indigo. Oh yeah. I brought the wet indigo back home. It'll need to dry completely before I throw it into the wash. The pokeberry needs a couple days in the pot, so we'll have to wait and see how that turns out. I really appreciated Grace sharing her knowledge with us today, teaching us about the pokeberry, and generally getting to see how she dies in her studio is definitely getting my wheels turning about how I can improve my own setup. Jennifer, Grace, and I are all freelance textile artists, and oftentimes we're regularly doing these kinds of projects, but it's alone in our own studios. So it was especially fun today to have company and spend time with friends. Until tomorrow. Ah, oh, welcome, you're back. I am at home in my home studio with Gravy Boy. I get a day alone uh, with myself out here. This is my new sewing studio, which if a video hasn't come out yet, I'm working on a, a new studio tour, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, but this is you know, one of my first days getting a chance to work in it. So what are we gonna work on? Well, one of my drudgery tasks that I have for today is that um, part of the way I make money independently is I work as a freelance technical designer. And so I work with other designers to help them develop patterns and samples for their clothing line. So I have a client uh, job today where I need to develop a pattern. Lord, am I procrastinating that. So. The way that I'm gonna make myself get through the work I need to do is I am going to reward myself with finishing that pattern um, by working on this shirt pattern that I was talking about on Monday. The cool thing is that this shirt I used as inspiration for a design for my previous uh, clothing line, Ann and Ann, except for that we developed it in silk velvet and it had three quarter length sleeves and puffy shoulder caps. So I, what that means is I have a pattern that matches this, but I just need to change the sleeve. So I can draft a new sleeve and then I kind of feel like because I've already worked with that pattern and troubleshooted it that I don't really need to make a test mock-up of it and that I might just be so bold as to go ahead and cut out of the silk shirt mousse. <gasps> if I can get this garment cut out today, I think that'd be a really awesome goal. I don't know if I'll get very far with sewing because it, this has piping that is filled with cording all around the lapel. So I don't have any of that. So I'm gonna have to figure out where you buy that. The other thing I can work on today is uh, finishing this pair of jean shorts that I started for Adam last week. I actually found this great super soft stretch twill um, in a sample yardage at the reuse center for like a couple bucks. And it should be able to take some dye. So I think that this is gonna be a full week of dyeing. If I get these sewn up today, then I can probably dye them on Friday. And speaking of dyeing, the indigo's in the wash and um, we're actually on off-grid solar out here. So no dryer. So once it finishes air drying on the line, I will share with you the results of that. Let's get started. <laughs> Okay, 
I couldn't resist. I had to finish them. But now I really need to start my client work. I like to start with a tracing of the original sleeve and I make this by pinning the sleeve to my paper which is sitting on a piece of foam core board on my table. When I remove the sleeve, I simply trace along the pin marks connecting the dots. Next, I make the sleeve a little wider to accommodate my biceps. At this point, I walk the sleeve pattern with the armhole of the bodice to see how well they're lining up. Usually it won't match perfectly off the bat, so I make some alterations and try try again until everything lines up. You'll find that you walk the pattern a lot. Drafting sleeves was so intimidating to me for a long time in my pattern making journey, and I still feel a sense of accomplishment when I can get this right. If you're wanting to learn how to do this yourself, the best advice I can give you is don't give up and just keep practicing. The sun has gone down, I've eaten dinner, guess who's back on the table, and I've got all of my dried indigo here to share with y'all. So it's interesting how different the different fibers took the color. So the lint, excuse me, the linen produced this rich, rich indigo, indigo. I'm totally in love with this color and I would love to do more linen with the indigo. Uh, likewise, the cotton turned out really great too. Um, look at how cute the underwear ended up. I put the elastic on it and finished the legs. But you can see how where I wrapped, like the back was where it touched the PVC pipe. And then the outside was where it directly touched the vat. And you can see how much richer the color is. So I don't know how you could mimic that um, this pattern and get it evenly on both sides. I don't maybe, I mean, maybe you dip it once like this and then flip it around and dip it again, but that seems a little tedious for a pair of underwear, but just thinking. Also the bed sheet turned out really cool. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm gonna make with this. I'm probably not gonna make a button down shirt with it, but maybe some napkins or um, a table, it could be a cool tablecloth for a party or something, that'd be kind of fun. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to have this in my stash. The silk uh, faded a lot more in the wash than I was hoping. I really loved how rich it was before it got washed out, uh, but it's still a nice uh, delicate color and some of the pokeberry got in here a little bit, so it kind of has a little bit of a pinky tinge. So this could be a cool project. It could also be kind of cool to clamp it in a new way and dip it again and start like layering the clamping technique on that. That could be cool. Um, here's just a solid, a piece of silk that I dipped solid without any clamps. And you can see how it, it ended up more of this kind of soft baby bloom. So it's kind of good to know what your options are. Uh, the wool was the darkest out of everything. And I'm very pleased with this color because I have an idea for a future tiny house knitting project that I wanna use with this yarn. And so it was perfect timing to be able to take this to Grace's and dye it. So I'm gonna finish winding this and clean off my table and then I'm ready to cut out my silk charmeuse. I gotta get gravy off this table. Today, we are in the car. We're headed to the Forge Makerspace all day. <laughs> he 
has work all day and I've got my mentor hours later. So I usually bring a handful of projects with me to work on until then. So I can potentially start sewing my shirt today there if I can find some cording for the piping. So we will see about that. And Grace is going to come in later and she early, I guess last week sometime, she brought in a mini floor loom for folks to use at the forge, which is pretty rad. And uh, she asked me if I could make a tutorial video for her so that people can reference that. Hopefully she'll bring those uh, pokeberry fabrics and we'll get to take a look at that. After dropping Adam off at work, I headed to my number one favorite store, Reconsidered Goods. Reconsidered Goods is a nonprofit creative reuse center that takes donations from manufacturers as well as people like you and me with the goal of diverting useful materials from the landfill and instead offering them at bargain prices to the public. Hey Paige! How are you? Good. It's part craft store, part thrift store, it feels like a scavenger hunt and a giant art installation. You never know what you're gonna find and you always have a lot of fun. It's the first place I go when I'm looking for materials for a project, especially because you can find things here that you can't find anywhere else. Even the things that you can find at any generic craft store, you can typically find it here for a lot cheaper. And you get to do things like pilfer through horrifying tangled nightmares of barrels of yarn to find exactly what you're looking for in the end. I love this place. Now that I had cording options for my piping, I can begin sewing my shirt. I got two different weight cotton yarns to try, but neither of them ultimately felt as thick as the piping on my reference shirt, so I opted to just go with the thicker one that I had. I begin by tearing a strip that'll be big enough to use as my casing. Because this charmeuse has stretch in it, I'm just using the cross grain. If it didn't have that stretch, I would have done bias cut. Surprisingly, the cording started to feel even narrower after I sewed it into the casing, like it was being compressed or something, and I got a little bummed out and I tried to play with doubling up the yarn, which was kind of stupid, but ultimately the cording I had gave me the look I wanted, so I went for it. one pick in so you see what I'm talking about. The threads have been woven into cloth and when it wraps around this bar it is cloth so this is the cloth bar. I'm going to release a little bit okay so now we've got this. I'm finishing up my night with a good beer and a group of friends. I've been sketching a little bit which is a nice reminder to be creative when I can but let me show you what I managed to get done on my shirt today. I had really good success today with the first part. I just went ahead and went for it with the collar. You know, I wish I had a piping, you know, foot for my machine, but I don't, but I, I made it work. So first step complete, and now I'm motivated to get this done tomorrow. Great night, yeah. see you tomorrow. Tail, and I'll show you how to leave it on the tail. I just need this. Happy Friday! Today is the last day of my week in textiles and I'm up here in our secondary loft of our tiny house on wheels editing footage from the loom work that Grace and I did yesterday. We built this tiny house and moved in only a couple months ago so we're still trying to settle in with how where everything lives and trying to figure out where the computer goes. So this morning I've got it kind of temporarily set up over here, seeing if this works, which is a pretty rad spot. And Adam's practicing his guitar, which is always fun to have going on in the background. But yeah, thinking about what I'm gonna work on today, totally excited to finish my silk shirt. I couldn't get to sleep. I got up at like three o'clock this morning and naturally I did research on piping and cording and pipe, a pipe, getting a piping foot for my industrial machine, which of course there's like tons of options. And like, it's amazing how little information I could find on where to get cording specifically for garments and like what thickness you use. Um, ultimately I found it's just a cotton rope 
and you just want something stable and whatever thickness gives you the results you want. So I think I was on the right track when I just bought cotton yarn at Reconsidered Goods. Yeah, if anybody else has any information about what they've learned about cording or piping for clothes, I'd be interested in hearing it. It's, it's always a journey to learn how other people make things because we all kind of, there's so many different ways to even make the same thing. And so it's sort of an endless journey in figuring out what works for you and how you like to do things. So I do think that the yarn was working for me yesterday and I'm excited to maybe finish that shirt today. I also want to do a dye bath for Adam's new shorts so that he can start wearing those. I asked Grace yesterday about the pokeberry results and she said that they had taken a really long time to dry. So I think she was just now getting them in the wash today. But she said that the color had turned out very pale, almost peachy, and that she had gotten the ratio wrong and that she had read that she thought it was four pounds <clears throat> of pokeberry for one pound of fabric. But it turned out it was actually 47 pounds of pokeberry to one pound of fabric. So needless to say, the color was pale, but honestly, my favorite part was foraging for the pokeberry and spending time with friends. So I had a great time and we'll see the results uh, whenever they're done. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna get to finishing editing this and then I'll get to start on one of my projects today. This dye bath is going to be very similar to what I did on Monday, but with a little change of cast. I'm going for a dark gray color today, and since my fabric is cotton, I'm using an MX dye called Better Black. By adding salt, it'll create an atmosphere in the water where the dye will want to push more into the fabric, creating deeper and richer colors. After stirring for a while, I noticed the shorts taking on a blue hue. So I impulsively added red and yellow together to try and neutralize the blue with an orange. Dyeing can be a very scientific process with very specific results, but if you're not too particular about what you end up with, you can be more free like this with your approach. I'm also using a soda ash here to help create the chemical bond instead of the citric acid I used for the silk. Only time will tell what we end up with today. While the shorts get rinsed in the wash, I jump back over to my studio to work on the silk shirt. Making the piping casing larger and then cutting it down to my exact seam allowance after adding the cording helped me make sure it would line up with my lapel pieces. I found some kind of one-sided foot in my sewing tools. It would have worked better if it was flipped on the other side, but still, it definitely made it easier to sew right along the edge of the cording. And that's what great tools are about, just making it easier to sew better. Sweet. I put in the extra effort to French seam the shoulders and side seams after completing the piping on the lapel. Trimming the seam allowance and lots of pressing makes this job tedious, but successful. Now I attach the collar to the neckline, completing the full lapel. Now all that's left is sewing up the sleeves, oh yeah, and the piping on the sleeves, the pocket, and the piping on the pocket, and don't forget the dreaded button and buttonholes. Fortunately, I was recently gifted a vintage Singer machine, which at the time I didn't feel like I really needed, but I noticed it had a really nice buttonhole foot and thought maybe it could help me produce better buttonholes than the results I was getting on my other home machine. <sighs> this has been my first project to get to try out this foot, and I'm so pleased to say that it worked out great.
Not only was I able to finish my shirt, but I completed it just in time to wear it to a little birthday dinner with our friends Emily and James. Also, do you recognize that tablecloth? See what I did, eh? It would have been too perfect to also get Adam's shorts done, but with the drying time, as well as them still needing a button and buttonhole, they didn't get finished until the following weekend. But I thought y'all still might want to be able to see how they turned out. I didn't expect them to end up teal, but I think they're even better than what I was initially going for. I love when that happens. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, as always, happy sewing. Still gonna drip.